lighter. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Oh, the shakers. Oh, the shakers. Really 
nothing else to say past that. Our, our Savior said, it is finished. This simple phrase is one of the most significant phrases in the life of the believer because it signifies that Christ has accomplished that which he set out to do. So when we find Christ in the text, he, he's yelling out, it's finished. He's yelling it out from a place of exhaustion, but from a place of triumph. That the work that he had been sent to do was now finished. Now Matthew 5 and 17 says, don't misunderstand why I have come. He said, I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. When we hear the phrase, it is finished, one might ask the question, what is the it? If we are going to understand the it, we must also understand the depth of the death. There were four things that were made manifest as a result of the it is finished. One was the atonement of our sin. To atone means to make amends. In the Bible, atonement is associated with man's sin. And God commanded Israel to set aside one day each year, the tenth day of the seventh month, which he called the day of atonement. The people were to bring a sin offering, an innocent animal sacrifice whose blood was brought in to make the atonement. God said, for life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for your soul. And then when we skip over to the New Testament, we find, in fact, in Hebrews 9 and 22 that says, According to the law of Moses, nearly everything was purified with blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So what does that mean for us, people of God? That means that when Christ said it was finished, it freed us from the penalty of sin. Now you don't even know where to shout. Because when it freed us from the penalty of sin, that means our sins, those past, present, and those that have yet to come, that when Christ went to Calvary, that it canceled the debt of our sin. Every disobedient spirit, every lie, every cuss that escaped my lip, every time I sip that drink, God said I canceled the penalty of your sin. Not only did the atonement, the sacrifice of God cancel the penalty of sin, but it also canceled the power of sin. I don't know if any of you have been caught in a stronghold, if you've been bound to some things, but, but the atonement says that you are free from the bondage of sin. So not only am I not calling you or charging you for the cost of the penalty, I'm releasing the power that it has to hold you. I'm looking for some people who've been freed from something. I'm looking for some people who God has delivered from something. So when we think of
Acceptance is defined as the act of taking or receiving something offered. So Christ's sacrifice allowed us to find favor with the Lord and restore our relationship with God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sins so that we could be made right with God through Christ. So the acceptance of God is also a part of the end. And because we've been accepted, we've also been granted unprecedented access into the Holy of Holies. Yeah. Now, now, in the days of the Old Testament, access to God was reserved for the high priest. See, the sanctuary conceptually was God's palace. The most holy place was his throne room and the ark was his throne. Entering the holy place was that that should not have been taken lightly. It, it, it limited even the high priest to enter into that holy place uh, except for when his presence was required. But when Christ said that it was finished, when Christ said that it was finished, that unlocked the access to the Holy of Holies. That means that I can enter into the presence of God 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days of the year. And I don't know about you, but when I get into the presence of God, I find the fullness of joy. When I get into the presence of God, I find peace. When I get into the presence of God, I find comfort. I find my confidence. The Bible says in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. So 
Spirit. I tell you to open up your mouth right here and just begin to give God praise for the victory over your life. Come on, open up your mouth and give God praise over the victory right now. The victory is already yours. The victory is already yours. The victory is already yours. So the next time the enemy tries to 